How can you look at Japanese Mary Poppins and feel anything other than warm and fuzzy? How can this great big ball of wholesomeness represent anything other than the joys of youth? Have you ever been handed a balloon and have had that small gesture make your entire day worthwhile? That's what Totoro is, a free balloon to make your day right. Yet, somehow, those feelings were not what I got when watching My Neighbor Totoro. I mean, I definitely did eventually, and have the merchandise to prove it, but not at first. My Neighbor Totoro is a movie more than any other that flips your perspective depending on how old you are when you watch it. Yeah, maybe I pick up on some innuendos in Aladdin when I watch it as an adult, but the feel of the movie doesn't really change. Whether I'm 10 or 30, I'm still just here for some absolute jams and fast-talking, incoherent Robin Williams. Sometimes both. Totoro is different, though, and not just because in Totoro there's no monkey sidekick with a dapper vest. Through the eyes of an adult, I didn't see Totoro as a cute movie about two cute kids and their cute animal friends. The whole time I watched it, I felt anxious. I was just waiting for something bad to happen. The mother of the Kusakabe family had more death flags than Sean Bean in literally any movie that Sean Bean is in. The whole movie, I was preparing myself to be emotionally smacked across the face with her death. One minute, we're flying up a tree with a stolen umbrella. The next minute, Mom is donezo. But then credits roll and Mom is alive and well. She even pops out another baby, it seems. I had that cynicism of an adult pushing me to think the worst this whole movie, to the point I didn't enjoy it as much as I could have. It's interesting because clearly Totoro has a sort of Mickey Mouse appeal to him in Japan. He's the face of Studio Ghibli, and I'd wager one of the more recognizable characters within that country. Not to the extent of Pikachu or Anpan Man, but for a lazy fat forest monster with only one movie, he does pretty well for himself. But the difference between him and Mickey is colossal. Totoro's story is one with heart and soul, and clearly filled with nostalgia for a simpler time in Japan. It shows hardship and the struggles of a youth trying to balance her childhood innocence with the responsibility of her younger sister. Mickey Mouse shows a half-naked mouse trying to hook up with a mouse that looks almost identical to him. There's definitely a very different feeling these characters and their stories give off. I was able to watch my neighbor Totoro recently for the second time. This time, it was in a movie theater. One which was surprisingly packed considering it's a movie from the 80s and all the other stuff going on in the world right now. There were lots of kids there and for them it was clearly just a movie about the wonders of youth. Exploring your own backyard and using your imagination to create an unforgettable time with an awesome supersized bunny. Although I'm still not sure if this giant bear creature is imaginative or just some sort of forest spirit that only children can see. And honestly, even with more context, I don't think there's any reasonable explanation for the cat bus and its rat lights. This Walmart brand Cheshire cat just makes me uneasy. Then again, I guess that's the point. I don't understand it because my imagination and mind isn't what it used to be. I mean, my mind's still kind of childish considering I'm a grown man with an anime YouTube channel, but definitely not filled with that childlike whimsy anymore. But no kid watching this cat bus hopping through rice fields thought the way that I thought. They didn't think this cat bus was possibly metaphorical and that Totoro was just a figment to help two children cope with their dying mother. No. They thought that they were looking at a bus made of cat flush and that it was the coolest thing they had ever seen. Upon that rewatch of Totoro, I had a blast. I embraced the cuteness. I latched onto the wholesome. I hopped onto Totoro's tummy and flew through the skies while humming a whole new world to myself like I was wooing Princess Jasmine. What an adorable movie! I knew the mother would be fine this time and ultimately, I had to accept the movie for what it was. Perhaps I shouldn't get myself so worked up when watching these movies. I mean, look at Ponyo. There's nothing sad about Ponyo. Everything works out. Everything about it is superior to The Little Mermaid. Who needs beautiful sirens when you have a chicken fish? Nobody, that's who. If I learned anything from the likes of Totoro and Ponyo, it's that I have nothing to worry about with Studio Ghibli. So now that I know that, let's check out Grave of the Fireflies.